Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings from Prophet Elias Greek Orthodox Church in Santa Cruz. And uh, as you can see, I'm back to our beloved parish. I'm here in our church. And you can see behind me that we started uh, a continuation of our fresco project, Glory Be to God. Um, now, today, the iconographers will come and start with the fresco of the Nativity of Christ. And then we are going to have on this big wall all eight um, uh, big feast days of Christ because again we have a uh, few big feast days already done in our church. Um, as you know like from a couple uh, weeks ago I, when I was in Sweden I started to share my stories that I had experienced in, uh, in the northern land, uh, my new homeland and um, Today, I also would like to share one interesting story that I witnessed and influenced me, and um, I would like to share that with you, hoping that it's going to have at least a little bit of the um, a starting point to, to contemplate more about uh, similar situations that you have in your life and see again through the, to the providence of God's mercy and also God's willing to uh, a calling, constant calling to uh, bring us closer to him. Well, uh, during my stay in uh, Sweden this time, I had an opportunity to see and explore the churches around the area where I'm living. Uh, not only the Orthodox churches, but as you know, the majority of the churches there belong to the Church of Sweden, the Lutheran Church of Sweden. And many of those churches that I was able to see in my area are built uh, between the 11th to the 13th centuries. Beautiful churches. Uh, I have opportunity to go inside and I had opportunity to meet the pastors there who are willing now when I go back again in December, they are going to show me all of these 10 churches in their parish because as I said, they have one main church which is uh, in, the, in, the, in the downtown on our small village, but then they have like a, in this like a surrounding areas, 10 more churches that they go to serve one, in every church one week. Uh, so when I was there uh, for um, you know, visiting the, 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 uh, the, the, the main church, uh, I had an invitation from the local pastor and me, the crew and uh, who, the people who work there in the parish, but also they have kind of Bible study and I was, um, willing to see how it goes in, the, in, the, in their circle and uh, learn again from the experience of others, uh, also practice my Swedish language. Um, I realized that there was a man who was um, in the church in his maybe 50s, 60s, early 60s, late 50s, who was blind. And uh, then after that, they introduced me that he was a deacon of the church there, and uh, he knew all prayers that they had, or psalms from their book, uh, by heart. Uh, all, uh, all petitions he, he knew by heart. First, it was my impression, like thinking about losing the vision and getting the vision. And then during our meeting, uh, they had a fika time first, and um, after that they had the Bible study. I was um, really shocked, uh, and positively, when I saw that this deacon takes his kombuskini, a big kombuskini, Montato's kombuskini, Chotki or Brojanica, and he started to do the Jesus prayer in Swedish. He was sitting maybe three or four seats away from me, and I can, could observe that in this environment of the Lutheran Bible study, we have a Lutheran deacon, ordained deacon, who is doing Orthodox Christian prayer using our Orthodox Combuschini. Well, uh, after the survey of Bible study, I was able to speak to the priest and ask about the deacon, and she was willing to introduce me to him. And then I found out from this uh, Deacon Michael, it's his name, that he was um, one, a student of theology. He gradually lost his sight. He had sight. And um, even being totally blind, he was able to go, before he was blind, he went to Montatos, 
but also when he became blind, he went to Montatus again. And then he was speaking about the, his experience with icons. And again and again, I realized how important iconography plus hymnology is the, not only the, the tool of teaching us about our beloved faith, but also the, the, the way, the tunnel into trans transcendent, unknown. Some, uh, but at the same time, it's a way of uh, meeting between Christ, the God, and us, his creation. He was telling me about how his own experience with uh, being blind, he went to Montatus and he could feel when he goes in the church that the saints that are represented on iconography on the frescoes are alive. They are there praying and interceding for the people uh, in front of the throne of God. And he was talking about his experience touching the icon because he venerates the icon, but the touching the icon and then how he could feel these connections, this unity, personal relationship with the saint represented, depicted in the icon and himself. And um, hearing these stories, beautiful stories, and then he told me about the conversions that had happened in Montatus during the, one of the visits, uh, when it was a group of the Swedish people who went to see Montatus and how all of this uh, beauty, internal beauty, but also the beauty in the church and the beauty of the iconography, hymnography, uh, affected them, overwhelmed them, that actually uh, those people, some of them converted uh, to orthodoxy and became orthodox Christians. None of them, not, more, not, not, some of, uh, not many of them actually were even Christians before that, even though they were born in, in Sweden but never practiced Christianity. They went to Montatus in a way to see this ancient Christian um, um, art, if we can say that, and that they came back as already transformed internally uh, and found God. And then I'm here sitting in the hall of the local uh, parish of the Lutheran Church in Sweden, and I have a man who is actually teaching me about the beauty, reminding me about importance of having in your life, in your heart, God, faith, hope. And then he showed me, like in this, like I was thinking, it's a desert for Orthodox faith. Somebody who is even not Orthodox, taking Combuschini, praying Jesus prayer, bringing this calmness in the room, even though I am an Orthodox priest there, seeking, it's supposed to be like a saint, that should come from my side. But no, it comes from the side of a blind man, a Lutheran deacon who is praying the Orthodox prayer with fullness of his heart. When he speaks about the, 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 the theology, patristics, he, is a, he, is a PhD, or, or he has a PhD in patristics, but not from this academic perspective, but from this experiential perspective for talking about those saints that he was, for church fathers and mothers, not only about their writings, but having this un, 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 untimeless timelessness and his timeless uh, relationship with these saints to the prayers, as seeing them as brothers and sisters, showing that our God is the God of the living ones, living ones, not the God of the, of the dead. And all of that really was so overwhelming me to showing me again and again that God speaks to us, give us these beautiful small signs, lectures, lessons, however you would like to see it, signs to calling us closer to himself and saying, look, I'm making the children of Abraham from the stones. I don't speak about deacon as being a stone, God forbid, no but just that I was coming with the expectation that they cannot find anything in that, like a calming me from the Orthodox perspective in the Lutheran parish hall. 
And then you see, you, you can see first the friendship, first this beautiful hospitality that those people show to me. It's, it's, it's speechless first, welcoming, uh, having, you know, uh, curiosity, asking questions, uh, seeing, uh, welcoming you, embracing you. But at the same time, something else was giving to me uh, at, uh, for my own spiritual growth. Trust in God. Do not fear. Have faith. Go forward. And be firm that God is with us. The only is where we are, where is our heart toward him. And then he is going to teach us from unbelievable perspectives that he is with us even when we feel and think that he abandoned us. Then he is the most closer to us. But this is also like thinking about the beauty of our orthodox art, creativity, that actually was expression not only and the teaching the faith, which is the first primary source. And this is like a fresco, as you can see, it's an open Bible, a depicted Bible. But at the same time, this internal experience of this closeness and knowing that God is with us and how these people feeling, ex experiencing that, express that through their inner creative work. In this case, it's fresco, uh, fresco projects, hymnography, literature, and poetry, etc. Paintings, obviously, and other things. I'm so thrilled to be again here with Prophet Elias, especially during this uh, process of, uh, of doing the fresco project here, uh, to see how it uh, continues. But I hope that you will join us and join us first and foremost in the liturgy, in the prayers, but also to come to see us, to see the church, to see how the Fresco project goes. God bless all of you, and looking forward to seeing you all. God bless.